We welcome you to Lake Norman High School tonight on our Bayhackle Sports Game of the Week. This is the 4A West Region, the two-seeded Lake Norman Wildcats taking on the 11 seed Chambers out of the Queen City 3A, 4A Conference. Someone going to punch their ticket to Lawrence Joe Coliseum for the regional final next week. Hi, everyone. Kendall Lewis alongside the former coach, John Reister, here with you tonight on BayhackleSports.com. John, it doesn't get much better than this. When we take a look at that 4A bracket, winner of this one gets the Myers Park North Mac winner next week in Winston-Salem. Yeah, regardless who comes out of this game, you know, they're going to have their hands full next week, but they don't care about that. They're thinking about tonight, and we got two teams that are really going to put up some points. Tars Bowie scored 40 against Weddington the other night. Uh, an exciting player, sophomore, 14 points a game, about 6'6". Six, six. It, it plays on the perimeter, really a task, can shoot the three. And then on the other side, we got Trent Steinauer. On the other side, we got Trent Steinauer, 6'9", 195, being recruited by Wake Forest, Clemson, and a bunch of other high majors. That kid can really play. And we were told Steve Forbes of Wake Forest may be in attendance tonight for Trent Steinhauer. They've already offered as well as Clemson and multiple other Power 5 schools. Well, I tell you, Steinhauer's got a lot to prove because I'm going to tell you what, he's not going to go against a better group of athletes than these Chambers Cougars. And, uh, you know, they're going to come at you at ways, and they're athletic, they're tall, they're long, and they're aggressive. So they're going to go right at the 6'9 shot blocker. Both these teams are balanced. Both these teams played extremely tough conference schedules. You think about Lake Norman out of the greater Metro 4A conference with the likes of Mooresville, Cox Mill, Hickory Ridge, to name a few. Chambers had North Mac and Hopewell in their conference. It was ultra tough this year. Well, I tell defense, tell you, Kendall, defense is going to be the name of the game tonight. Both these teams can really score the basketball. They share the basketball well. They get everybody involved, but you got to get stops at this level. We just saw that with the girls' game, and uh, Charlotte Catholic was just a little bit better defensively than Lake Norman and came away with the win. Steinhauer will jump it up against Mario Hansen of Chambers. Chambers in the orange. Wildcats in the white were underway. Lake Norman wins the tip here to start the game. Elite 8, 4A West action. Here's Santana Lynch, number 10 in white. Steinhauer, our player to watch at 6'10", trying to back his way in on Mario Hansen. Very, very skilled, 6'9", 6'10". Tough move, and the opening bucket of the game from Nick Arnold. That's a guy that is averaging double figures in their playoff run so and far. To me, he's a key, Kendall, because he's going to draw a tough defensive assignment. He's going to be guarding somebody about six or seven inches bigger than he is, but he is tough. Uh, and I tell you what, uh, Coach Hodges thinks, you know, thinks he can handle this situation. He's going to be a primary ball handler. And I'm going to tell you what, Josh Yates has got to play big in this game also. He is their primary ball handler, and he's going to have a lot of pressure on him from the Cougars. Jaden Terrell inbounds with Chambers. 22 wins this year. They went 12-2 and two in the Queen City 3A, 4A conference. And most of those wins came, I mean, those losses came against nationally ranked teams. Chambers is very talented. Good shot fake. Carr, floater, no. Tap back, Hanson wouldn't drop. Fight for the rebound, and Bowie comes up with it. And offensive rebounding is one of the strengths of Chambers. They've got to continue to hit the glass, and, and the Wildcats have got to be very fundamental and, and hit somebody before the ball hits the rim and get them out of the lane. Nick Arnold will bring it up the floor for Grant Hodges' crew. Lake Norman, the two seed, had one of the top RPIs of the year. Lynch lost it. Hanson, the save. And then it was out of bounds, last touched by Jordan Patton, out of bounds. It'll go back to Lake Norman. We'll take a second look. Well, I tell you, it's a phenomenal pass by Hanson. Uh, Jordan Patton just took a bad angle. He should have been cutting to the rim. That would have, have been a finish. They get it to McKinnon on the backside. No, Steinhauer put back flush. Both coaches told us last night on the phone they want to run. This is going to be a track meet, Kendall. It's going to come down to the little things. Hanson goes up. With a catch inside, had it blocked by Steinhauer, and then Santana Lynch was fouled. First foul we've seen here in the first quarter, not even two minutes in, and we take a second look at that block from Steinhauer. He's averaging about four and a half of those. Well, and I tell you, Steinhauer is, is a huge key to this game. I think he's got to be smart defensively. He likes to block a lot of shots, almost five blocks a game. 
but he's got to be smart. He's got to pick his spots because the one thing Lake Norman can't do is get him in foul trouble. Catch and shoot three. You betcha. Josh Yates from downtown. 49 threes on the season. Make it 50, Kendall. This kid can shoot it. Again, Lake Norman will mix it up. Some of that zone pressure as Arnold takes it away. Arnold looking to push for the Wildcats. Finds McKinnon, corner three, he'll launch. Short, grabs his on miss, McKinnon back up, and he was fouled. Another huge point for the Wildcats, Trey McKinnon, Division I recruit. A lot of mid-majors are after him. He wants a little more attention. He's got an opportunity this evening, Kendall, to get that attention if he can have a big game against uh, Chambers. You know, Trey McKinnon's got multiple Division I offers. Conferences out of the Sun Belt, the SOCON. Again, this is a kid that's drawing some Power 5 interest as well for the late Norman Wildcats. He's only a junior. He's a part of that 2025 class. Goes one of two. Well, nearly was tipped back in. Rebound, Chambers. Chambers have got to recognize what Lake Norman is doing defensively. They switch defenses, a lot of 1-3-1, 2-3, but they'll trap out of it, and they'll keep tremendous pressure on the ball. Score it in the foul for McKinnon. What a start for Lake Norman so far. Well, and it's coming on the defensive end. It's turned into quick transition points. And wow, what a finish by Trey McKinnon. Well, Trey McKinnon, a chance at three. His brother Torian on this roster as well is a year behind him as he completes it. Nine-point lead early for the Wildcats of Lake Norman. A little 1-3-1, one, one, and they're very, very big on the front of that 1-3-1. You got Trey McKinnon at 6-5, Santana Lynch at 6-5. So if you're Vance, you've got to attack the seams of that zone. You're not going to be able to just pass it over the front of those two guys. They're too long. Deep one. Oh, you betcha. Taurus Bowie, he dropped 40 Tuesday night and launches and hits from three. You know, Coach Frazier was talking about him, said he's really grown up this year. He's not a sophomore anymore. He's a junior playing-wise, and, and he's really learned to pick his spots, and that's why his shooting percentage has skyrocketed. Here he is with a steal, and he was tripped up from behind. Got a little conversation going between Taurus Bowie and Trey McKinnon. Nothing malicious, just say, hey, glad to meet you. Nice to be able to play against you tonight. I'm sure that's what they said. <laughs> Standing room only, Elite Eight, and the type of atmosphere you would expect. Someone going to Winston-Salem next week. Bowie misfires from three, offensive rebound. Back up strong, no. Hanson, how about a third chance? But he traveled first. Yeah, yeah. might have got away with a push if you're Lake Norm in that situation. This is going to let him play, Kendall, so you got to play strong. Late Norman gets it in bounds to Arnold up the sideline. McKinnon, he can shoot it, launches from three, and this one gets up over the top of the backboard. It'll go back to Chambers here with 4.22 left to play in the first. Good job by Chambers to get out on that three-point shooter. One thing I saw against Weddington in the first half, they ended up pulling away in the second half, but in the first half they had a hard time finding Weddington shooters in transition. You look at the road to get here. Lake Norman beat a really good Grimsley team Tuesday night. Chambers had to go on the road, knocked off a Weddington team that ended the year with 27 wins. Well, and this is a similar situation environment-wise to Weddington. It's going to be loud, and it's going to be raucous. And Taurus Bowie with five of the first seven for Chambers. Yates, coast to coast, gets it to drop. I think a key in this game is the decision-making of Josh Yates. He likes to get downhill, but I don't know if he's played against a team with the length and the size and athleticism as uh, Chambers. Second chance. Marcus Carr couldn't get it to go. Loose on the floor. Still no whistle. Picked back up, and Chambers has it. And instead, Jaden Terrell will back it away. Set play called. It's a lob at the rim. Looking for Bowie. And now a jump ball. Arrow's going to keep it on this end. And it should take us to a media timeout here with 321 left to play. We got a good one. Elite Eight action in the West region of North Carolina. We'll be right back on Bay Hackles.
13-7, 3-21 left to play in the first quarter. Kendall Lewis, Coach John Reister here with you tonight on BayHackleSports.com. Elite Eight, someone is punching their ticket to the Final Four in Winston-Salem next week. And a big three out of the timeout, Jordan Patton. He doesn't shoot the three a lot. Only 18% on the year, but, you know, these guys are talented. They all can shoot. you got to get out there on them. Yates in transition. He'll pull it from deep and answers. Now that guy's just a flat-out shooter. You see the rotation coming out of his hand? That ball was pretty. Both these teams with size, shooters, length, everything you would imagine two Elite Eight teams would possess. They've got it. Well, it's going to come down to turnovers. It's going to come down to 50-50 balls. Nice move that time by Marcus Carr. He couldn't get it, but a steal. McCotter takes it away. McCotter kicks it. Patton, three. And Steinhauer skies for the rebound. I tell you what, Malik McCotter brings a lot to the table when he comes in. He's their second-best three-point shooter, and he is their defensive lightning. He is quick on quick. Arnold spins. Steinhauer, he can shoot it there at 6'10". He's got nice touch. Picks up his dribble, had it knocked away. Quick hands from McCotter. Corner three. And that time off the mark from Hanson. He's got that type of range, Hanson. We've seen him knock it down a few times in this playoff run for Chambers from the outside. Well, I tell you, the middle of that 2-3 zone that Lake Norman's playing on misses is wide open for cutters. And Vance, I'm sorry, um, Chambers has got quite a few guys that are very adept at cutting to the front of the rim. We've got to look for that moving forward. Whistle and a foul as Steinhauer will have a pair of free throws, was hacked on the way up. Good, yeah. strong attempt to dunk that basketball. There's, there's going to be nothing in the paint weak tonight, Kendall. Yep. You're going to have to play strong. This is a kid right here. He's already been offered by Wake Forest, Clemson, multiple other Power Fives. Steve Forbes is here tonight to watch Trent Steinhauer. He's along the baseline. I'll tell you what, Steve Forbes and the rest of these schools that are in attendance tonight are going to see some high flyers in this game. And this is an opportunity high school kids just dream about. You got Division One coaches in the gym looking at other guys, but, hey, they got to see you play too. So get out there and play your best and get after it. Hanson trying to go to work on Steinhauer. Couldn't finish it. Grabs his on miss, and it swirls out, but he's got a couple of free throws coming. Boy, take a second look at the bigs. This matchup inside with Steinhauer and Hanson is going to be fun all night long. Well, and, and Hanson's got a little more help than Steinhauer does. So, uh, you know, the other guys for Lake Norman's really got to get a body on some got to hit while the ball's in the air and make sure they don't get a running start. We're going to get some highlight jams on finishes from Chambers. So you got to be very fundamental when you're playing a team as athletic and aggressive as Chambers is. Yeah, one thing about you look at these two teams, and we mentioned their road to getting here. They beat two quality teams Tuesday night. When you think about Lake Norman knocking off a really good Grimsley team. Chambers, as we mentioned, beats a Weddington team that had won 27 games. Hanson goes one of two. Leak out in transition. McKinnon, the flush. And that's just a defensive miscue by Chambers. You've got to have somebody back when you're shooting free throws. And whoever was at half court came running in thinking that uh, Torres Bowie was going to secure that rebound. Trying to feed it inside Hanson. He'll face up on Steinhauer. Hanson, left hand, yes. Yeah, you got to make him go the other way. Everything left-handed um, Mario Hanson does is going to go into the basket. So you got you got to play him on that right shoulder and force him to go the other way. Arnold surveys the floor. Gets it to Santana Lynch, the son of 13-year NBA veteran George Lynch. He couldn't finish on the switch hand. And he's a slasher. He's going to put his head down and attack the rim almost every time he gets the basketball. Bowie, no. Tap back, yes. Jordan Patton on the cleanup for Chambers. And the backside of that 2-3 zone just stood and watched, and Coach Hodges does not like that one bit. Steinhauer looked at the three. Here's Yates. Wants the baseline. Yates, the kick. McKinnon, shot fake. Good closeout that time by Cameron Thompson, and sophomore. Steinhauer going to work inside. Missed it, tapped around. Hansen collects the rebound. Bowie 
Good touch pass. And the first quarter comes to a close. 19-15, back and forth. And Lake Norman's got a four-point lead. We'll be right back on Bay Hackles. Nineteen fifteen after one as we come back to you on BayHackleSports.com. Folks, here's a look at the 4A West bracket. Right now, North Mech has an 11-point lead on Myers Park in the third quarter. Winner of this one tonight gets the winner of that matchup at Lawrence Joel Coliseum in Wake Forest on Thursday. Kendall Lewis, John Reister here with you. What an interesting first quarter. Back and forth, a little bit of everything, John. Yeah, and, and I think both teams are kind of still feeling themselves out a little bit and, and you know, figuring out what they're going to get. The big thing that jumps out at me is Chambers' offensive rebounding. They're getting two or three uh, cracks at it every time down the floor. And, you know, Lake Norman's got to figure out a way to, like I said, get a body on them and keep them from getting running starts. Steinhauer, he'll try it from three, and he connects. And that's and that's why the kid that's why the kid is being recruited as a high major, six nine, six ten, very very skilled, very young. Uh, only weighs one ninety five. I mean, he's going to get up to probably two twenty five by his senior year. So, the you know, kid's got a ton of potential. Hanson, long two, off the back iron, whistle. They say a shove in the back, foul against Taurus Bowie. And that's the second team foul on Chambers. You're 46 seconds into the second quarter. And Taurus Bowie's got to be careful. Chambers cannot afford for him to get in early foul trouble. You know, he's very slight at 6'6". And uh, when he's getting inside, you know, he's got to probably do a lot of pushing and shoving to get around down there in the lane. So uh, he just picked up his he just picked up his second, Kendall. Well, let's see who they give it. That one's going to be against McCotter. No, nope, they called it on Bowie. Oh, it is on Bowie. It's second. Wow. Yeah, he's going to have to sit down for a while. So Brian Frazier's got to go to his bench, and he gets Jaden Terrell. Chambers really small out there right now, but exceptionally quick. Arnold picks up his dribble. Here's Santana Lynch. He'll survey the floor. When Nick Arnold, number 20 in white, is a kid that has really elevated his game in Lake Norman's playoff run. Ten points a game, five rebounds, and a couple of steals in their playoff run, and they turn it over. McCotter, coast to coast. McCotter can't finish. Offensive board, Marcus Carr. And Chambers will reset. Kick, open look, three ball off the mark. And that's a good look for McCotter. He's 39% from three, Kendall, so Coach Frazier will live with that off the second uh, chance opportunity. Arnold floats it back out top to McKinnon. Catching fire for Santana Lynch. And a foot on the baseline. This is going to go back to the coup. Take a second look at the replay. Boy, good effort from Will Googans. Had a foot on the line. 
Well, and I tell you, Lake Norman's gotten a little bit out of character offensively. You know, Santana Lynch is not a three-point shooter. He's only got 13 on the season. He's better off putting putting the ball on the floor and attacking and, and then maybe finding Josh Yates on the weak side. That 1-3-1 one, one matchup is giving Chambers a little bit of trouble. They're having a hard time figuring out. There you go. Get it to the middle. With Lake Norman, we talked with Grant Hodges, and they mix and match defensively, and they pick their spots well when they make changes. Well, and, and it, it's primarily a 2-3 or a 1-3-1, one, one, but they, they have so many different variations of it, Kendall. Sometimes they'll trap. Sometimes they'll just hedge in the passing lanes. The key to me is if you've got Steinauer on the black, on the back, blocking shots, and you've got Trey McKinnon, a long 6'5", lanky, athletic guy on the front. And that closes out a lot of passing lanes. Timeout with 538. We'll keep it right here. We'll go back to that bracket again. This is the West region, folks. Again, the Elite Eight in North Carolina. Elite Eight games tonight. And the final four from the East and the West will take place at Lawrence Joel Coliseum. The 4A will be played on Thursday, game times are still to be determined, and the winner of this one tonight gets the winner of that Myers Park North Met game in progress right now at Myers Park. And I tell you that whoever comes out of that Myers Park North Mecklenburg game is going to be a handful for one of these two teams. You talk about high major recruits, you talk about athleticism, and uh, you know different styles of play. North Mech's going to pressure you end to end for 32 minutes, whereas Myers Park's more of a a team that wants to play in the half court. So it's going to be interesting uh, to see what happens coming out of this game and who they face next week. Now Chambers had to play in that Queen City 3A, 4A with North Mech, one of the best conferences in the state. Catch and shoot from three off the mark from Jaden Terrell. Offensive board back up Patton. He was blocked and then out of bounds. They say last touch by the Cougars. And another offensive rebound by Chambers eventually – that's going to cause problems for Lake Norman because, you know, Steinauer's in there. He's having to block a lot of shots, which could lead to some quick fouls. Yates picks up his dribble, finds McKinnon, high post. He'll pull up on the J, smooth as silk. And Trey McKinnon's very effective at the free throw line, can elevate, shoot over anybody, and he's got a soft touch. Whistle and a kick ball. Well, it's funny, you think about these two teams. The Chambers, the 11 seed in the 4A West this year, had to go on the road Tuesday night. And they actually had a tough draw in the first round. They had to play a conference opponent, Hopewell, that came down to the, the wire. That was the third time they'd met Hopewell this year. Shot altered, Guggen's the rebound. Yeah, Marcus Card, nice aggressive move to the basket. He's just got to finish that. He's got to be more aggressive. Steinhauer, an offensive board. Back up, he missed the bunny. And a save. Now Lake Norman goes into that trap immediately along the sideline. Marcus Carr draws the blocking foul. You know, except for the foul at the end, that was tremendous defensive transition by Lake Norman, especially since they extended out on the miss on the opposite baseline. They do a good job of getting back and, and shutting down the passing lanes and, and the pass to the basket. It's a little bit late with the feet. For Grant Dryden. Dangerous pass. Carr goes up and gets it and then finishes off the glass. That, Little window work by the sophomore. Yeah, using the rim to shield off the shot blocker. Much better finish that time. Instead of going away from the rim, he went straight to the, to the glass, using the rim as a protector. Chambers has got a few of the top 2026 players in the state of North Carolina. When you think about Carr, you think about McCotter, you think about Taurus Bowie, a really good young team. Carr on the floater, yes. And that's his game right there, penetration, attack, get downhill at 6'5", as long as he is. He gets in the lane, it's going to be impossible to block his shot. Rebound, Cougars. Extra pass, corner pocket, Thompson. Another sophomore missed on the three. Now Carl floated back to the inside on the elbow. Catch and fire, Terrell. And missed everything. Yeah, 
Chambers settling for some threes. They've got a huge advantage inside, and I think they've got to attack the shot blocker in the hopes of getting him in foul trouble. That's a key to the game, Kendall. They have to attack Steinauer and make him work inside. Shooting up those early threes are just, uh, it's just, uh, it's, it's not effective. That's a timeout with 3.02 left to play in the first half. 24-19, Lake Norman the lead. Lake Norman, a five-point lead over Chambers here in the Elite Eight, the 4A West. Someone is going to punch their ticket to the Final Four at Lawrence Joe Coliseum. Tell you what, John, we are in store for some really good Final Four games next week. Well, I tell you, something I just see down there, Kendall, is Torres Bowie's back on the floor. That's a big roll of the dice. For Coach Fraser, he could pick up his third foul. That changes the whole complexion of the game. A whistle and a foul on Nick Arnold. That's his first. Yeah, he's riding him out. And, you know, you got to credit the kid for trying to box out the bigger Hanson. But, you know, you can't, you can't use your lower half to move him that far. Deep three. And Yates pulls in the rebound. Yeah, Chambers, they got to stop falling in love with the three. They got to get it inside the hands and let him go to work. And Carr took it away, but he's called for the foul. And that's Carl. That's his. That's his third. Wow. So Marcus Carr with three, and Taurus Bowie's on the floor with two right now for Chambers. Yeah, Bowie's got to be careful. I tell you what, if I'm Coach Hodges, I'm going right after Bowie. They're playing man to man. Get whoever he's covering the ball. Pull up, Jay. Yes, for Nick Arnold. 26-19, just over two minutes left to play. Showing 2-3 here. See if they trap out of it. Nice baseline cut. Well, right idea for Mario Hansen. Chambers got it back, and now Steinhauer clears the boards. Well, I'm okay with that. He got in the middle of the paint. Just, you know, it was a little bit of a tough shot, but they didn't settle for three. Under two to play, first half. Lynch, oh, good drive and kick. And big three, Grant Trident, the senior, knocks it down. He's got 22 of them on the year, Candles. That's why he's out there to shoot that ball and space the floor. Hanson, he'll try it from distance. Off the mark, tapped around, fight for the rebound. A jump ball. The arrow is going to keep it on this end with Chambers. Well, I love these kids getting after it, Kendall. You know, something, something we're not seeing that we see way too much at the college and the pro level is everybody getting their feelings hurt when there's a good aggressive play, falling to the floor. Everybody wants to stand up and pose. I'm glad to see these kids aren't doing that. Just play the game. There's too much at, there's too much at, uh, at risk here. To, to do something silly to pick up a technical foul that's going to hurt your team. And now a little perspiration timeout. They're going to wipe up the floor here with 125 left to play in the second quarter. This is the largest lead of the game for Lake Norman at 10. It has gradually grown here in this second quarter. Now Chambers likes to get it in and go to a high-low situation down in the post. Hanson probably going to flash to the high post and somebody's going to cut from the baseline. Inside Hanson, trying to go to work on Steinhauer, just pulleys his way to the rack. Second chance, no. 
And going back up and drawing the fouls, Jordan Patton. And he'll head to the line for Chambers. Santana Lynch picked up that foul. That was very fortunate for Lake Norman because uh, Steinauer fouled him right after Santana Lynch did, and they got Lynch on the first one. Boy, Jordan Patton, another one of those seniors along with Mario Hansen that Coach Frazier had told us played such a pivotal role in their season so far, but especially the last few weeks, this Chambers team playing their best basketball at the right time. Well, he's a senior, and Coach Frazier talked about what a leader he was in, in practice and in games and in the locker room. And, you know, he's another kid along with Mario Hansen who, who was on that uh, team that played in state championship game four years ago, three years ago. So a lot of experience, and uh, Coach Frazier said he's done a great job of being a leader. One of two at the stripe as he hits the second. Just over a minute left to play, first half. Kendall Lewis, John Reister here with you on BayHackleSports.com. A little 1-2-2 one, two, two press, make him think a little bit. Nice diagonal. Yates gets it in. The ball movement's been really good for Lake Norman so far in the first half. They've done a good job of not letting Chambers pressure get them out of what they want to do. Arnold surveys the floor. And Lake Norman going to feed this one inside. Steinhauer got the size advantage trying to go to work. Up and under. Tap back. He gets it to go. I don't think they're going to give it to him. I think it was they're on the wave it. Yep. And I think that's a good call. Wave it off. We'll get a look at it here. Yeah, it was still in the cylinder. It was almost out, but it was still on the rim. Well, and something, we did a game here earlier this year. Something you got to pay attention to, the baskets move and shake here at Lake Norman. We had a game here earlier this year on a free throw. They had to get someone out to kind of stop the momentum of the basket moving. At that time, they waved the basket off of Steinhauer. Big possession here for Chambers. Driving kick, Carr had it partially blocked. And then there's a whistle to foul on Grant Dryden of Lake Norman. What a closeout by Josh Yates. 5'11", getting out on the 6'5", car, and getting a finger on that shot. And to do it all without fouling. Yeah, Chambers, they've been hampered with some foul trouble here in this first half. Mentioned Patton's got three. Bowie is playing with two right now. Bowie, good shot fake. He'll pull up on the jumper. And Arnold pulls in the rebound for Lake Norman. Bowie's got to be careful. He almost got a foul in that reach behind. And Steinhauer the flush. Bowie trying to slice in, draws the foul. I've been impressed with Nick Arnold, Kendall. Yeah. Well, this kid, look at it. He just he goes through the defense, makes a beautiful bounce pass. That's the only way he could have gotten the ball to Steinhauer for that finish. But with 2.2 seconds, Taurus Bowie to the free throw line. Coach Frazier told us yesterday, he said, look, Taurus has figured out, especially this second half of the season, when and where to take his shots. As we mentioned, big difference in a November-December sophomore versus a February-March sophomore. Absolutely. He, I hope he's smart enough not to pick up a foul in this last two seconds. Good. Yates the heave. Well, that was online, another foot, and that might be one of the longest threes of the year. 31-22, first half comes to a close. Nine-point lead for the Wildcats. We'll be right back on our downer long.
We welcome you back to our Downer Law Firm halftime report here on BayHackleSports.com. And Lake Norman's got a 31-22 lead over Chambers here at the break. Kendall Lewis, John Reister, what a up and down seesaw first half. Again, Chambers got in some foul trouble there with Jordan Patton picking up his third. Taurus Bowie picked up his second in the first quarter. So they were hampered with some foul trouble in the first. But a nine-point difference so far. And, folks, we want to remind you that tonight's Bay Hackle Sports Elite Eight game is brought to you by Queen City Audio, Video, and Appliances, your outdoor kitchen and tailgate headquarters, Acosta Heating, Cooling, and Electrical, and last but not least, the Downer Law Firm. That's Charlotte's hometown legal team. If you're injured, be sure to call the Downer Law Firm. 31-22, our halftime score. Nine-point lead for Lake Norman here at halftime against Chambers. And we'll take a break. We've got more coming on our Downer Law Firm halftime report. We welcome you back to our Downer Law Firm halftime report here on BayHackleSports.com. Kendall Lewis alongside the former coach, John Reister. Lake Norman, a nine-point lead over Chambers here at the break. We'll take a look at some first-half highlights from both of these teams. Plenty to go around. And for Lake Norman, doing what they've done all year, John, it was a balanced scoring attack from the Wildcats. Yeah, and they're taking care of the basketball. They're not turning over it much. And Everybody stepped up. They've stayed within their roles. They've gotten it inside to Steinhauer, and they've made some timely threes to open up the paint for him. You know, Chambers, on the other hand, attacking the glass, getting offensive rebounds. They've got to have at least eight or nine offensive rebounds. The big thing they're doing is settling for threes. I think they've got an advantage inside, and they've got to attack Steinhauer in the second half. Um, but very impressed with Lake Norman. They picked their spots well. And the big thing is, is they've taken care of the basketball. Big storyline, as we mentioned just a few moments ago for Chambers, is Patton had to take a seat that last 90 seconds of the second quarter, picked up his third, and Bowie picked up his second in the first quarter. Yeah, and, and you know, they, they dodged a bullet on that one because neither one of them have two going in the second half. I thought the officials have done a pretty good job of letting the kids play, and uh, it's probably just they're probably going to loosen up even more in the second half. So both teams have got to come out and be physical, 
what a game uh, Lake Norman is getting out of Nick Arnold. Um, my, one of my concerns coming into this game was, was how the Wildcat guards were going to stand up to the pressure of Vance, and, and they've more than answered the call on that. I mean, in fact, they've been outstanding. 31-22, nine-point lead for Lake Norman. We'll take one more break. Second half's on the way here from Bayhackle Sports. Thirty-one twenty-two. It's a nine-point Wildcats lead as we come back to you to get set for the second half. And look who's in the building. You got Steve Forbes, the head coach at Wake Forest. Of course, as we mentioned, seeing plenty of talent in this one tonight. Of course, they've offered Trent Steinhauer, the big man for Lake Norman, who had a nice first half. But also Clemson in attendance tonight. A couple of assistant coaches. Absolutely. I used to tell my players, you know, when these coaches come in, they're going to see you too. So get out there, get after it. Don't leave anything, you know, uh, second guessing yourself or anything like that. Be aggressive in everything that you do because all you got to do is have one big game in front of the right guy and you're on your way. We get set to begin the second half. Chambers, as we mentioned, the 11 seed had to go on the road Tuesday night. They won against Weddington. And this place slam packed, which you would expect out of an Elite Eight atmosphere again the final four and the state championship going to be played at lawrence joel coliseum next week great great i mean I, this this takes me back in the day when we used to play antoine jameson in providence at their place and you know jason parker in west charlotte lines and grady cole standing room only loud uh this is what high school basketball is all about here's santana lynch with the rock he'll slice in missed it off glass but a whistle and a foul just 17 seconds into the second half. And Trent Steinhauer going to go back to the free throw line. Or excuse me. Oh, he wasn't in the act of shooting. Foul was on the floor, they say. And McKinnon will try a three. Short rebound Chambers. Wow. I didn't see that one, Ken. It looked like uh, the Chambers player just kind of stumbled. But the official had a look. We'll get a look at it here. No, I don't see anything there. I think his feet, feet just got tangled up. A one team foul apiece between the Wildcats and the Cougars. You know, Lake Norman team out of the greater Metro 4A conference with the likes of Hickory Ridge. Mooresville had a good season as well as Cox Mill. And then Chambers, of course, out of that Queen City 3A, 4A split conference with North Mac and Hopewell, West Charlotte, to name a few teams out of that league. Well, and you look at you look at their non-conference schedule. Yeah. They, they both played nationally yeah. ranked teams on yep. the road, played in big time Christmas tournaments. Yep. You only get better when you play better teams, Kendall. Yeah, Chambers played several private schools that ended up making state championship. Games like United Faith, Victory Christian. They also stepped out and played Central Cabarrus as Mario Hansen catches and sticks it in off glass. Nice penetration. You know, when they penetrate and attack the lane, good things happen for Chambers. They fell in love with that three-point shot in the first half, and, and it kind of bit them a little bit, and uh, that's why we've got, you know, a seven-point game right now. I think if they settle down and get back to attacking the lane, they're going to get back into this ballgame. Loose on the floor. The possession arrow going to give it back to the Cougars of Chambers. 
A big possession right here, John. Just over a minute into the third quarter. And the Cougars have this thing back within striking distance. Well, I'd like to see him get the ball back into Mario Hansen. He's done some good things inside. I keep harping on the fact that they've got to attack Steinauer. To me, he's the most important guy in the game for both teams. You're not going to get him in foul trouble if you don't attack him at the basket. He, he will try to block every shot in his vicinity, and you've got to make that work against him. And we're having to stop the game. Again, this place, you talk about standing room only, and I mean standing room only. Even the baseline is full here at max capacity at Lake Norman High School. And right on cue, John, they go inside to Hanson for the deuce. Well, he's the X factor. He's their leader. He's, he's their leading scorer. And he didn't touch the basketball much in the first half. So I think that's a huge key for them moving forward. Back to back, it's for Chambers to start the second half. Yates trying to no look dish, nearly turned it over, but Steinhauer gets it back and flushes it. I tell you, Yates got up holding his hip. Got to keep an eye on that. Out of bounds. This will go back the other way to Lake Norman. And Steinauer got another piece of a floater in the lane. Take that extra dribble, get in his chest, and get him in foul trouble. Guggins, who's given him good minutes, a senior for Lake Norman with the basketball now. Steinhauer, he'll send his feet from three, and he connects. That kid's got a world of potential, Kendall. World of potential. That's his 21st three on the season. He's only a junior. Got another year in Grant Hodges' system here at Lake Norman. Carr wants the baseline. Driving kick. Bowie shot fake. Lost it. Yates dives on the floor, first one there, and gets it to Arnold. Now Lake Norman wants to push up top for McKinnon. And just through his hands, and a whistle comes in after. And I tell you, what a heady move by Taurus Bowie to run intentionally into Steinauer, 90 feet from the basket. That's Steinauer's second foul. Or excuse me, that's just his first foul? I thought he picked up one in the, in the first half. Well, Taurus... Now I'm talking about Steinhauer. Yeah, Steinhauer, I believe that is his first. Elbow jumper, yes. Nice patience. Any of the zones that Lake Norman's going to hit you with, the 1-3-1 one, one, or the 2-3, if you get the ball to the free throw line with somebody that can make the right decision, good things are going to happen. Arnold trying to drive in. He was bumped. Well, you mentioned Arnold, how strong he looks. I mean, that's, that's a strength foul right there. He's probably got 20 pounds on uh, Malik McCotter, and that's how he got that call. Steinhauer is going to try it from three again, that time short. And rebound McCotter. Up ahead, Bowie, long two. Left the jumper short, offensive board. Now it's loose. Kendall, Lake Norman's been the first one on the floor on every loose ball in this game, and that's why that call was made on Chambers. Chambers has got to get dirty. They've got to get down and dirty and, and aggressive in everything they're doing. They, they kind of look a little disconnected right now. And they're going to pause to wipe up the floor on this end. And nice move by Coach Frazier. Looks like he's going to pick up full court. And still a little energy into his guys. You get a couple steals here, a couple turnovers and some dunks. This whole scenario could change in a, in a hurry. And we're talking about the second game on this floor tonight in a gym that has got to be around 100 degrees, John. And you look, standing room only, we're stopping play almost every possession now to wipe up the floor. Arnold, smooth jumper. And a 10-point lead for the Wildcats. Well, he just makes the right decision every time, doesn't he? Nice yep. pull-up. I used to tell my, my smaller guards like him, you get to the free throw line, somebody's between you and the basket, just pull it right there. You can make that shot eight out of ten times. You know, we were talking with Coach Hodges about that. Look, we know about, we knew coming into this game the core four would be a problem with Steinhauer, McKinnon, 
Santana Lynch and Josh Yates, but guys like Nick Arnold and Grant Dryden, he knew had to be big tonight. And there's Josh Yates knocking it down from distance. You got a good shot. You fake one pass. It's a great shot. Three in the corner for Yates. Take a second look on the extra pass from Dryden. And if I'm Chambers, I don't understand how Josh Yates is so wide open. I don't think he's missed a three all night. you got to find shooters in transition. You know, you don't necessarily have to run to the front of the rim or in the lane anymore. It's more important to find those shooters on the perimeter in transition defense. Nobody's looking to, to attack the front of the rim anymore in transition. They're looking for easy threes. There's a look at Grant Hodges, the head coach for Lake Norman. Year number five as the head coach for the Wildcats of Lake Norman. There's Brian Frazier in year number 10. Now we go back to Coach Hodges. Year number five as the head coach here. And he's a statesful guy. Makes the commute every day as a PE teacher here at Lake Norman High School. No, he's an English teacher. English teacher. Excuse me. English teacher here at Lake Norman High School. I'd like him better as a PE teacher. I was a PE teacher. But anyway, he's a heck of a coach. You know, talking to him before the game, I was impressed with how he has created a grassroots program to feed, uh, you know, his program here at Lake Norman. Really involved with the kids at a young age, building them up, training them, you know, grooming them to, uh, to be a future Wildcat. Carr trying to drive in. Chambers really needs a bucket right here. Carr, got to be careful, draws the blocking foul. And you take a second look. Arnold picks up his third, third team foul on Lake Norman. And that'll take us to a media timeout with 3.45 left to play in the third. 41-28, 13-point lead for the Wildcats. Here's a look at Brian Frazier, the head coach for the Chambers Cougars, year 10. He played his college basketball at Catawba for legendary coach Jim Baker, who was there 20 years, is now the head coach at Central Cabarrus High School in 3A. They've not lost in two years, but we enjoyed talking with Coach Frazier last night about his team and the program. You look at the trajectory of Chambers and where he has taken this program in his 10 years to new heights. Yeah, quality guy, Kendall. Quality guy, loves his kids, pushes them hard. He said, I'm old school, but I love them as hard as I push them. And out of bounds, this will go back to the Wildcats. That size for Lake Norman, John, just wears on teams as the game goes on. Little one 2 one, one by Chambers. You got to get it to the middle and go out the other. Dryden in transition, just swirls out. Steinhauer, an offensive board. Dryden will try it again. McKinnon, skies for the rebound. And tapped around Marcus Carr, coast to coast. Oh, nice step through and the finish. Boy, that's a nice move. I tell you what, anytime I see that Euro step, Kendall, it looks like a walk to me. <laughs> Deficit down to 11 for Chambers. Steinhauer backing his way in on Hansen, and he draws the foul. You 
You know, initially, Hanson stayed vertical. Got to give a little bit on the top. You can't bring them down even an inch or the officials are going to make that call. And Trent Steinhauer at the free throw line for Lake Norman, we mentioned has powered five offers. A Coach Hodges told me this. He might could play Division I tennis. You imagine those long arms that is a really talented tennis player. Well, that's where he gets his lateral, lateral quickness from. That's why he's got such great feet. All tennis players have great feet. And makes both free throws. Lead is back up to 13 here. Late third quarter for the Wildcats of Lake Norman. McCotter, pull-up jumper. I thought, I thought McKinnon got a piece of McCotter on the way by. I think the officials might have missed that. Steinhauer. Size advantage. Goes up strong. No. Couldn't finish it. Shot fake. Bowie wants the baseline. Draws the blocking foul on Yates. That's a good call and a good decision by Torres Bowie. Could have settled for a long three instead of attacking the smaller Josh Yates. Yates is quick, but Torres is just a little bit quicker. Got that shoulder past him and got that foul. Each team with four team fouls here in the third. And a pause to wipe up the floor. You know, the thing about this, of course, you've got to wipe the floor up, John, when you look at this, but every possession down is starting to kill the momentum for these two teams right now. Yeah, but you've got to think of safety for sure. these kids, and you know, you, that, that can't be secondary to anything. And, you know, the reason that, that sweat won't evaporate off the floor is so daggone hot and humid in here, you it's know? got to be pushing 100 degrees in this gym, standing room only. And Bowie trying to slice in, draws the foul. That was a little late whistle, I thought, Ken. It looked like the play was over when they blew the whistle. That's the second on Steinhauer. And the fifth on the Wildcats here in the third as Bowie goes to the line and knocks the first down. Now that Chambers has got two on the big guy, Everything they do offensively has got to be focused on getting that third foul called on him. They've got to attack him. Marcus Carr going to get a little breather. Nice job by Coach Frazier getting him an extended rest towards the end of the quarter. And we got a foul off the ball against Desmond Martin of Chambers, and that's the fifth on the Cougars here in the third. It's going to send Will Googans to the free throw line for Lake Norman. Now he's only made 18 free throws all year, so he must not have been there very often. You know, interestingly, Coach Hodges does not post free throw percentage or three-point percentage on, on his uh, stat sheet on max preps. I understand why. I understand why. I mean, he doesn't want other teams to know who to foul late. I mean, it's a smart move by his part. Guggins missed them both. And rebound, Jordan Patton. Bowie slicing in, left hand, yes. And Steinauer didn't even leave his feet that time. Smart play by the big guy. Would have picked up his third. Dryden bounces it low. Steinhauer trying to go up, had it poked free. And tapped out of bounds. It's going to stay. On this end with Lake Norman. Well, I tell you, Marcus Carr from the weak side had a chance to step in and take a charge on Steinhauer. Instead, went for the block. Yates, quick hands, the takeaway by Martin. Wildcats get it back, and a reach-in foul called on Chambers. We got Will Googans going back to the line. He missed his last two. Opportunity to right the ship a little bit with, a two, with two more. Yeah, Will Googans, part of that senior class here at Lake Norman, has been so special for Coach Hodges with Grant Dryden, Nate Chaffee, Finn Hells, and Googan and Dryden have played big spots 
this season, and especially their playoff run up until this point, look at the road to get here from Lake Norman. They had to take down East Forsyth in the second round. Grimsley, a very good and big team out of the Piedmont Triad on Tuesday night, the Sweet 16. Bucket and the foul on the other end. And that's the third foul on Steiner. I tell you what, Taurus Bowie must have heard what we said, Kendall. Attack the big guy. Let's get that third foul. That's a game changer. You got to think Coach Hodges has got to get the big guy out at least for a little while. Taurus Bowie with a chance at three. One of the best players in the class of 2026. In the state of North Carolina, he dropped 40 against Wennington in their Sweet 16 win on Tuesday night. Completes the three-point play, and just like that, it's a seven-point game. I tell you, that kid's going to be an ACC player. Yeah, I think so, too. I guarantee you Coach Forbes is down there and say, whoa, 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 hold on a second. Who's this kid? If he doesn't know about him already, he probably knows about him already. That kid's going to get strong. He's 6'6 right now. And I could see him being 6'7", six, 6'8", six, 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 before he graduates from high school. Uh-oh. And wait a minute, a foul off the ball. Yeah, it's on Taurus Bowie, so that's his third. And, boy, that, that's just a Mickey Mouse foul. He grabbed the jersey of uh, Trey McKinnon. He, he was, him and McKinnon were jawing a little bit coming up the floor. But, you know, this, this, this game's way too big for that Mickey Mouse stuff. You guys, you got, you got to keep your heads. You got to play ball. Let your play talk for you. And McKinnon steps up smooth as silk. This is a kid that is a double-double machine. When you talk about Trey McKinnon, we mentioned multiple Division I offers already in Power 5 interest. You were mentioning Taurus Bowie for Chambers, number four right here in orange, with the sweet drop-off and a block. Oh, Late boy. whistle comes in on Trent Steinhauer. I think that's four, Kendall. I think that's four. It is. I was just getting ready to say, both coaches are rolling the dice a little bit. And all of a sudden, the Chambers faithful starting to get up on their feet, and Steinhauer's going to have to have a seat here late third quarter. Well, I started to say, both coaches are rolling the dice a little bit with the three fouls on their, two, on, on their best players, and uh, Lake Norman just got bit by it because Steinhauer's going to have to sit for a while. Santana Lynch checks back in in his place, so this is a smaller lineup for the Wildcats. Got to make free throws here, though, if you're Chambers. And I tell you, you got to catch 22 of your coach, Frazier, because I'm telling you, Taurus Bowie's starting to get it rolling now. He's got three, so I don't know if you want to set him down or not. Lane violation on Mario Hansen, so wave the second free throw off. Well, mark this down, Ken. we got a nine-point game, Lake Norman's way, when Steinhauer goes out. So let's see what happens moving forward. Struggling to get it in, and they turn it over. He bounced the pass on the end line. Fisher was right on it. That's a great call. And that's another thing when you talk about Steinhauer off the floor, John, is that they don't have an emergency guy on the press break that they can really hold it up at 6'10 with that length and pressure of Chambers. And Marcus Carr with the stick back. Well, I tell you, Chambers, Chambers is going to get a free run to the rim now, both offensively and defensively. So this game could very well change. Yates, oh, tough bucket and the foul. Absorbing the contact. That is a tough call on Jordan Patton. Watch this. I thought he kept his verticality. I think that's a bad call, Kendall. I thought he kept his verticality, but besides all that, what a tough attack of the basket by Josh Yates. Can't complete the three-point play, but picked up by Lynch. And his foot was on the baseline. It's going to go back to Chambers. And Grant Hodges didn't like it. He's protesting with the official down on the sideline, and it's getting loud in here. Yeah, it's getting a little chippy out on the floor, too, but neither one of the coaches are happy right now, Kendall. These officials, I think, have done a great job thus far. They need to kind of rein this in a little bit and get this game back under control. Hanson. Offensive foul. Wow. And there's Josh Yates again. What a kid's tough. He just, 5'11", just took a charge from a guy 6'7", 225, and didn't even flinch. Well, Coach 
Grant Hodges was telling me before this one, John, that Lee's McRae, Division II, just called here at Lake Norman, Hampton, Sydney. He's got plenty of Division Three interest, but starting to pick up some Division II interest. Oh, he's definitely a D3 player, and there's nothing wrong with being a D3 player. He gets knocked to the floor hard here. You know, I think that floor is getting a little slippery, Ken. I mean, these guys are having a hard time staying on their feet. So Josh Yates goes to the free throw line to shoot two for Lake Norman. And I tell you what, with, with Trent Steinauer out, Kendall, in my opinion, Trey McKinnon's got to step up. He's got to be the main focus offensively right now. Keep the ball in uh, Josh Yates and Nick Arnold's hands. But I, I would make sure that Trey McKinnon gets a touch every time down. And you don't need to be in a hurry either because your big fella's on the bench. He's not out there to help you. Goes one of two at the stripe. Lead is back up to 10 for the Wildcats. The Vance has just got to spread the floor. They've got to find a way to get the ball inside. I'm sorry, Chambers. Got to get the ball inside. Carr, the shot fake, wants the baseline. Missed it. Trying to fly at the rim. Lynch the rebound. McKinnon, he'll finish off glass. Well, Lake Norman just makes you pay so quickly on the other end of the floor when you miss a bunny like that. Well, they don't hesitate. They don't hesitate. They just attack. And Bowie thought he was shoved out of bounds. And instead, it's Lake Norman basketball. You know, I hate to say it, Kendall, but that, that kind of looked like a little makeup for on the other end when Santana uh, Lynch got shoved out and there was no call. 9.3 seconds remaining exactly here on our game clock. And a takeaway, Bowie. Oh, to Marcus Kerr. Look what I found. And I was just getting ready to say that's a tough place to get the ball in in the backcourt in that corner. And a shift of the momentum with Chambers, the flush to end the third, 51-41. We'll be right back. Eight minutes to decide who's heading to Lawrence Joel next week. We got eight minutes to decide who is heading to Lawrence Joel Coliseum in Wake Forest on Thursday night when the 4A will play in the final four. Right now, Lake Norman, the two seed, leading by 10, 51-41. Kendall Lewis, John Reister here with you. And right out of the gate to start the fourth quarter, McKinnon strikes. I tell you, Trey McKinnon's answering the call. I really thought he had to step up for Steinauer on the bench, and he has. Deep three, McCotter. The Chambers struggles from the three-point line. Continue. Loose on the floor. Jump ball. The arrow going to keep it with the Cougars. Yeah, I, I just don't like Chambers falling in love with the three. Even if it's a wide-open three, you've got such an advantage inside now 
with Steinauer over on the bench with his fourth foul. You've got to pound it inside. You just have to. Well, keep in mind, folks, Trent Steinhauer is still on the bench for Lake Norman with those four fouls. And Bowie can't hit from three. Well, Nick Arnold, the sophomore, has been cool, calm, and collected for the Wildcats, and he stays that here. Reach in foul on McCotter. First team foul on the Cougars here in the fourth quarter. You know, McCotter did a great job of staying squared up, and he just kind of gave the foul away at the end with the reach. Arnold. Sophomore brings it up again. Yates, driving kick, throws it away. Marcus Carr could be showtime, and he flushes it home. And a technical foul, now things getting chippy. Uh-oh, benches are clearing here. Yeah, Comer heads have got a rule here. Coaches got their players back. I didn't see what happened, Kendall. I was watching the officials talk to Coach Frazier. And this is going to be a lot to sort out. Everyone is on their feet now. And again, emotion starting to run high. We'll see if we can get a second look. we got to also watch the officials here to see what they sort out. They're going to talk this over. Well, I hope they keep calm heads, too. You'd hate to lose a premier player to, to something like this. Uh, I, I hope we can get a replay out of this so we can kind of help, help sort it out a little bit for the viewers. And, you know, this is going to be interesting because is it going to be offsetting technical fouls? What is going to be the call here? And a pivotal moment with 6.54 to go in the ball game. Well, absolutely. And, and neither one of these teams could lose one of their best players at this point. And, and, you know, there's been a little bit of talking going on. And um, you got to think that had something to do with it. I don't want to speculate. I'd rather see it with my eyes. But... Uh, you know, these officials have got to make a strong decision right here so all this will come to a stop and we can play basketball. We'll see if we can try to read lips. We are on the second level up top here. When the officials come over to the scorer's table, we're going to have to pay close attention here. I just hope we don't have any ejections because it's going to mar a, a really good basketball game. I didn't see anything but a little bit of finger pointing and Maybe a little bit of shoving. I didn't see any, you know, punches or anything malicious going on. Just a lot of jawing and shoving and pushing and pointing. So I'm hoping that nobody gets ejected out of this game because this is a whale of a ball game. Yeah, and you, you think about with the ejections, too, of having to maybe sit in a half in the final four as well, if that's the case. And I hope these officials are actually talking about that, too. Yeah, you gotta, I think you've got to keep that in mind here for the players' sake. Obviously, emotions running high. I think best case scenario is they, they go talk to both coaches, they huddle up with the players and the coaches and say, all right, next guy that does anything's gone, don't let it be you. That, to me, that would be the best way to handle it. And then let the coaches handle it from there because they know the kids, they know how to handle them. And, um, you know, it's been a good almost five minutes now, so hopefully things have calmed down with whoever was involved. This is going to be interesting. The officials are still discussing this and with like, 6.54 on the clock. Like you said, this, this may have implications on next week. So they need to take their time and get it right. It looks like that's what they're doing. Both teams back in their huddles. And you had this scuffle. And now they're ejecting fans. They're asking fans. They're pulling fans out of... Well, hopefully they're Certain just sections. I hope they're just pulling them off off of the baseline. I, I never liked that as a coach to have spectators on the baseline that close to my players. Just too many things can happen. 
The officials are still talking this. Hold on. Well, the lead official is talking to Coach Hodges for Lake Norman. I haven't seen anybody talk to Coach Frazier yet. And again, still trying to sort this out. Kendall Lewis, John Reister here with you. Folks, while they're doing... Okay, so a technical foul on Trey McKinnon of Lake Norman. Shooting two and then Chambers basketball after is the verdict. And if you just heard the public address announcer, there were no technical fouls issued for teams leaving the bench. There was a timeout called. So you just have the technical foul, two shots, and then Chambers basketball. Well, I mean, we could have had a forfeit if, there, if everybody was going to get thrown out for leaving the bench because both teams were on the floor. We wouldn't have had enough players left to play. Now that will count as a personal foul. Yep. On Trey McKinnon, and that along was his with the second. technical. And that was his second, so along with it. So now he's got three. Yep. Well, you know what, Kendall? That, that's a pretty good resolution, I think. And um, It could have been a lot worse. It could, so have been a lot, it could have been a lot worse. You know, neither team loses a player. You know, Trey McKinnon picks up one extra foul. I think Coach Hodges could live with that. But I can't emphasize enough how these officials have better tighten up a little bit and, and start giving out some other technical fouls if things get a little bit chippy and chirpy between the players. And, you know, knowing both these coaches, I, I think they're going to have a conversation about that, and, and hopefully it's going to come to a stop. Okay, so now we're in a full timeout with 6.54 left to play here in the fourth quarter. And, folks, we want to take time to remind you again that tonight's 4A West Elite Eight playoff game is brought to you by Queen City Audio, Video, and Appliances, Acosta Heating, Cooling, and Electrical, and last but not least, the Downer Law Firm, Charlotte's hometown legal team. Once again, if you're injured, be sure to call Charlotte's hometown legal team, the Downer Law Firm. Ten-point game, 53-43 here between Lake Norman and Chambers. Benches clearing. So you had the technical foul issued on Trey McKinnon. So Taurus Bowie is at the line for Chambers. Gets the roll in the first. I'll tell you what, John, this could be a big swing right here. And the second one gets wedged in between the rim and the glass. I've never seen that happen, Kendall, after it hit the front of the rim. Now, I've seen it get stuck straight in there, but I've never seen it bounce off the front of the rim and get stuck there might be some condensation on the backboard so once again for those out there you had the two technical free throws and now it's chambers basketball so this could be a four-point swing if chambers could find a way to make a three right here they're going to move the inbound beyond midcourt big possession right here for the Cougars of Chambers. The Wildcats back into that 1-3-1 one, one matchup. Someone 639 away from punching their ticket to the Final Four at Lawrence Joel Coliseum next week. And a reach-in foul called on Lake Norman. And they're going to get Grant Dryden. That'll be team foul number two on the Wildcats here in the fourth. 
Chambers has got to flash somebody or put somebody in the high post at the free throw line. If not, they're just going to be dribbling around the perimeter against that zone. Carr wanted it from three, left it short. Arnold, coast to coast, and he was fouled. Yeah, they got Malik McCotter on the reach in as he came by. Lake Norman's wanting the basket to count. Let's take a second look. I think that's, if they call it on McCotter, it's on the floor, and it's not a goaltend. The ball had not got yeah. to the glass yet. Two shots coming for Arnold. Well, Nick Arnold, big part of this playoff run. As Grant Hodges was telling us, he's only a sophomore, and a kid that has really made a difference the second half of the season. It, it's always interesting, and John, you coached high school basketball for many years, but those sophomores that are in the lineups getting significant minutes on a varsity level like this, it's always fun to see how their games transform from November all the way to March. Well, I tell you, this kid, um, Arnold, I mean, Coach Hodge just said he's playing his best basketball of his career right now. And he's got a great handle. He's got a great feel. He's got tremendous lateral ability, ability defensively. You know, three-point shooting, we don't know because <laughs> what his percentage is, is not in the stats. But if he can develop a, a deep three-point shot, kid's going to be a college basketball player. They skip it. Martin, a big three for the Cougars. And I tell you what, he does not shoot a lot of threes. A little surprise for him to take that shot, but it went in. Lynch. Coast to coast with a bucket on the other end. We haven't said Santana Lynch's name much this evening, so he's another guy that's a senior that needs to step way up in the absence of Steinauer. And Carr shuffled the feet out front in the travel. You're going to look at the replay on Santana Lynch, the finish through traffic. A kid that is the son of 13-year NBA veteran George Lynch, who's in attendance tonight. Watching his son trying to punch a ticket to the Final Four. Arnold up ahead, Dryden. Trent Steinhauer is still on the bench with four, and they turn it over. Thompson gives way. Torres Bowie, frequent flyer miles. You can't throw that diagonal pass from the corner against these guys. They're too quick. They're too long. Take a second look on the steal. Defense to offense for Chambers. Fans, that kid's only 15 years old. <laughs> Imagine what he's going to be like when he's 18. He's an ACC player, Kendall. Right in front of some ACC coaches in attendance, including Steve Forbes, the head coach of Wake Forest tonight. And there's a look at Brian Frazier inside of the Chambers huddle. And we've seen Chambers. They've gotten within striking distance a couple of times. Do they have enough to get over the hump? And you see right there what's at stake. A spot in the final four at Lawrence Joel Coliseum. And we don't know the game times next week, but we do know the 4A is going to be played on Thursday night or at least Thursday afternoon. Two, four, six, and eight. We know the four game times each day. We don't know whether the East and the West are going to have the afternoon or night games at Lawrence Joel, but it will be on Thursday. Dryden up ahead. Dryden fouled from behind. Wow, I don't understand why Dryden didn't give that to Trey McKinnon. Had him wide open waiting underneath the basket right there. And uh, there would have been absolutely nothing Chambers would have been able to do to keep them from scoring. And Grant Dryden, 6'6", senior to shoot two for the Wildcats of Lake Norman as he buries the first. Kendall Lewis, John Reister here with you on Bayhackle Sports. Those are the two biggest free throws that young man's made in his career. I'm sure you that. Catching fire, Martin. Banks in a three. I think are he called you it. kidding me? I think he called it, Kendall. I thought I heard him call it. Bank is open after hours tonight. Arnold. Lays it in over the front edge. And that's that strength right there. He just scored that over a six foot five kid. What strength. And not a whole lot Marcus Carr could do about that. I think he's got either three or four fouls. Coach Frazier's been subbing in and out with him, so he must have some fouls. 
Bowie. Tough take to the rack, left it short. Outlet Yates, just over four and a half. Dryden thought about the three. Bounce feed inside Lynch. Here's McKinnon, double clutching, and he was fouled. Lake Norman doing an excellent job of handling this Chambers pressure. Getting easy shots at their end and getting to the free throw line. Uh, Trey McKinnon, the junior, at the free throw line. You know, we talk about Lake Norman got the bulk of their scoring back again next year. I mean, think about Steinhauer's got another year. McKinnon's got another year. Josh Yates has another year. He's only a junior. Yeah, Guggins and Lynch are really the only two in their uh, rotation that are playing big minutes that they lose. So this team's going to be pretty good again next year. And Chambers, of course, some of the best young talent you'll find in the state. And that time, a shuffle of the feet and a travel called on Martin. Yeah, kids have forgotten how to do the old jump stop. That's a perfect situation right there. You jump stop at the free throw line, it's an easy pass to the op opposite side for that three. That's kind of a lost art, Ken. You don't see it much anymore. That lead hanging around 10 for Lake Norman. At what point do you get Steinhauer back in the game if you're Grant Hodges, John? Well, I think you got to get him in sooner than later. Uh, although I will tell you, they've been playing pretty well in his absence, and Santana Lynch has been a huge part of it. Really quiet in the first half. You know, he's a senior. He's been here before. You know, played on a really good Myers Park team last year, played big minutes. And, um, you know, he's stepping it up. He's stepping it up. A chance at three for Santana Lynch, and he completes it. Well, he's still plenty of time for Chambers, but they got to go in a hurry. Well, don't fall in love with the three. It's not three ball time yet. You still don't have your shot blocker in there for, you know, Lake Norman. Attack the basket. That's a deep one there. Off the mark, it's long. If I'm Lake Norman, I'm spreading the floor and milking some clock. You got enough points to win this game. You got a 13-point lead with three and a half left. And really missing having Mario Hansen on the floor right now for Chambers, too. Well, I would have thought when Steinauer got in foul trouble that everything would go through Mario Hansen. We're going to take a break. 333, Lake Norman leading 65-52 with a chance at the final four on the line. We'll be right back. Dwight. 65-52, 13-point lead for Lake Norman over Chambers here with 333 left to play in the fourth quarter here in our Bay Hackle Sports Game of the Week. Someone going to punch their ticket to the Final Four at Lawrence Joel Coliseum. And Trey McKinnon throwing for the Wildcats. There's plenty of time. Chambers has got to be smart. They've got to get the ball inside to Mario Hansen. Maybe get to the free throw line, get some points with the clock stop. But their margin for error is very, very slight right now, Kendall. They got to play some really good basketball this last three and a half. Catching fire, three ball away. Carr off the mark. Arnold the rebound, and now there's a foul. 
Yeah, that's going to be on Mario Hansen reaching around from behind. And it's going to be Hansen's fourth. And Nick Arnold at the free throw line. Coach Frazier's got, I'm sorry, Coach Hodges has got Trent Steinhauer back out there for this last three minutes and some change. Boy, tip your hat to the Lake Norman players that stepped it up and held this lead while he had to sit down with those four fouls. Gets the roll in the first. And Nick Arnold, who has been so big in this playoff run, makes them both. And this lead is ballooned in the fourth quarter. Bowie looking, Lynch takes it away. Santana Lynch, the flush on the other end. Wow, what a fourth quarter Santana Lynch has had. On the step back three, Marcus Carr hits it. And that'll make it a 16-point game, 71-55 with 248 and a timeout. Well, I think if you're Chambers right now, Kendall, you... You, you got to try to get it. You got to try to get a steal early. If you don't get a steal, you got to get a foul. And uh, I don't even know if there's enough time on the clock to where you, you can pick the guy that you want to foul. So you're almost at a trade of three for a two situation here and hope they miss some free throws. I think that's the only chance you got. Your pressure hasn't been working. It hasn't been creating turnovers. Actually, it's, it's ended up with easy buckets at the other end for Lake Norman thanks to their uh, tremendous execution of their press attack. 71-55, our score 16, Lake Norman leading Chambers, and we did receive word North Mac knocked off the number one seed Myers Park Mustangs earlier tonight, so North Mac will be in the final four awaiting the winner of this game. And right now, your Lake Norman 248 as the two seed of punching your ticket to Lawrence Joe Coliseum on Thursday with a battle against North Met. And Arnold's fouled. And it didn't look like Chambers was trying to foul, but John, I'm not sure that's a such a bad thing with 240 left down 16. Yeah, but I tell you, you gotta you, stop the clock. You gotta stop the clock. And uh, I like like I said a minute ago, I, I don't think you can be too selective on on who you foul. I mean, Lake, Lake Norman's a smart team. I mean, they're, they're not gonna put it in the hands of somebody that can't make free throws. I mean, look how many Arnold's made in the last three minutes. I don't think he's missed. Well, Nick Arnold averaging in double figure scoring in their playoff run, but he's also pulling in a bunch of rebounds, few assists a game. He has turned into one of the primary ball handlers on this Wildcats team. The Coach Hodges has got a good one there. And a whistle and a foul called on the Wildcats here with 236. A little frustration. From Nick Arnold after missing those two free throws. Just a little too aggressive going after that loose ball. Quick three. Just won't go. Hanson, the stick back, no. Still battling. And the Wildcats come up with a rebound. McKinnon, the lob. Steinhauer, the flush. And the Wildcats are feeling it, Kendall. Carr on the step back three, partially blocked. Second chance, yes, from Patton. They get it across the timeline. Here's Lynch, coast to coast. He'll lay it in in the foul. Yeah, I tell you what, I tell you, you, you can't execute your press attack any better than Lake Norman has this evening. 
they, they've known when to attack. They've known when to pull it back out. They found shooters. Uh, that's what's won this ball game for them, Kendall, is, is they're taking care of the basketball and they're making Chambers pay when they throw their pressure at them. Chambers trying to salvage the clock, letting it roll as much as possible. Here's Hanson on the pull-up jumper. Yes, that is a kid, Mario Hanson, that has been a four-time all-conference selection for Brian Frazier in Chambers. What a career he's had in a Cougars uniform. Yeah, the kid's got a lot to be proud of. And a tremendous career. There aren't many guys out there anywhere in the United States playing high school basketball that can say they were a four-time all-conference player. And, um, you know, it's, it's sad that the kid doesn't have a chance to uh, go back and try to play again for a state championship because he's a, he's a great kid from a great family. His dad won a state championship at Garinger uh, back in the 80s. And, um, you know, just, just a great kid. And he's going to play. He's gonna be, his career's not over. He's going to go play college basketball somewhere. He's going to be a, a heck of a player for, somewhere, for somebody at the next level. Now Lynch makes them both. Lead back up to 19. What a game plan tonight for Grant Hodges and his Lake Norman Wildcats. Well, you know, they say you live with the three, you die with the three. And, and you know, I, th I think Chambers uh, just shot too many threes and not enough of them went in this evening. And um, ultimately that with, with the fact that, that the Wildcats took such great care of the basketball I guarantee they don't have 10 turnovers this evening but uh, you know if you, if you shoot as many three point shots as Chambers has which I bet you they're pushing 30 at this point and they're not making them this, this is the end result when you play a good team Bowie off balance misses the three Wildcats going to leak out again the lob and McKinnon the exclamation point on this one tonight and Trey McKinnon's got to be careful doing a little taunting out there after the dunk. He doesn't want to have to sit out the first half next week. You know, if I'm Coach Hodges, seeing he was in the middle of that fracas, uh, uh, fracas earlier, I'd, I'd consider getting him out of there. You don't want to run the risk of anything happening between your, you know, your second or third best players sitting on the bench next to you in the first half. Lynch just lobs it up. Lake Norman going to dribble out the clock in front of their home crowd. How about the number two seed, the Wildcats, out of the greater Metro 4A, punching their ticket to the Final Four at Lawrence Joel Coliseum next week. And I tell you, excellent game plan going in by Coach Hodges. Perfect execution of that game plan by his players. You know, big games from multiple players. What, just a great team win for the Lake Norman Wildcats. Unbelievable effort, and they await a battle in the Final Four with North Mac, who knocked off Myers Park earlier tonight. Our final score here, 82-61. Balanced scoring attack. And as you mentioned, great press attack from Grant Hodges and his crew tonight. Well, and that's what they're going to see from North Mech next week. You know, North Mech's going to pressure you, make or miss the entire game. And if they can take care of the basketball and get great execution by Josh Yates and Nick Arnold and not turn the ball over, they can play with North Mech. I'm not saying they can beat North Mech, but they'll be there. And plus, they've got the X factor. They've got Trent Steinauer. He's a big that can play, can step out and do a lot of things to beat you. 82-61, once again, our final score here from Lake Norman High School tonight. The Wildcats heading to Winston-Salem for the Final Four next week. For Kendall Lewis, John Reister, and the rest of our Bayhackle Sports production crew, we say good night from Lake Norman High School.